All right. Welcome to APS Radio, episode number 19. I'm joined by Dr. David Griffin, Assistant Chief David Griffin. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. It's nice to see you again. I got to see you live in January in Columbus. That was great. Uh, the last in the, snow. in the snow. That's right. I took that good picture. Love you. Um, the last time we virtually spoke, it was actually way back, right when COVID kind of started. It was May. Uh, at least that's when the episode was done. But that was episode 36 of uh, the 25 Live. So that was a perfect time to record everybody because everybody was at home like, oh, what do we do now? So I was able to track you down then uh, a lot easier than it was this time. But I'm glad to have you on here. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Look forward to our conversation for sure. So what we're going to actually talk about today is tattoos and trauma. Something you know all about. You actually know enough about it to where you actually wrote a book. Yes, sir. Interesting book. And uh, it's, it's, it's kind of funny how that, that book started. So I'm sure we can get into that in a little bit. If, if you will, just, I mean, jump right into it. Like, how did this whole concept, because you, you wrote a few different things beforehand, but where did you decide there's something here, we should write about this? Well, I found myself getting a lot of tattoos after the event of June 18th, 2007, when we lost nine firefighters. And I felt that was a way that I was remembering the firefighters. It was a way of healing for me. I couldn't really put my finger on it. It was something that I was really passionate about. I really enjoyed tattoos. I enjoyed getting tattooed. I liked the artwork behind it. But I knew there was something more to that because when I got a tattoo afterwards, I felt, I felt something. I felt calm, I felt relaxed, but also felt a sense of pride that I was doing something that I would remember for the rest of my life and I would see on a daily basis. And I started to do some research on this and it was interesting. I, I, I came across a lot of research that showed there was correlation to some type of growth from trauma. But then with that, you also had people that were utilizing tattooing to help them with that growth, along with other types of modalities, where, whether it be counseling or other uh, forms of treatment. So I started talking about this in some of my classes. It was really just an interest as I was starting to just present this and I had some great feedback from it. And then I received an email one time from someone that was really <clears throat> upset of my correlation with tattoos and trauma. And they believed that there was no correlation to it. And it was worded very strongly and I respected their opinion 100%. And so what I did is I responded and I copied a lot of the links from the research I had done, which were credible pieces of research that talked about tattoos and how they do help alleviate some trauma and people use those as remembrances for traumatic events. So I sent those to this individual. There's all types of nonprofit organizations that actually use tattooing for this type of help. And so as I wrote the email and I sent these different types of links and I really explained it, it was coming together to a point to where I felt that there's something here because I know I feel this and I know the people I've been talking with feel it because they've responded to that in my classes. But for this specific individual, they just didn't understand that. And that was something I wanted to educate them on and other people because if it's one, there's probably a lot more. And that's really where it started. An email, someone asking me, how can I correlate tattoos with trauma? And I really wanted to dig deep into it. I wanted to hear from other people that were interested in this type of tattooing as well. So that's how it started. And I, I set out to write a research-based book based on real-life events of people going through the trauma, but also with historical background of how that's been prevalent in the history. And then present a lot of people's ideas on why they feel tattoos and trauma are related. And it was pretty cool what we found out. Yeah, it, it is neat. And you, you tell a lot of stories in there, but you more than anything, you give everybody who participated in your survey an opportunity to to share what their thoughts are. And you see, not everybody, but there's a lot of similarities. A lot of people think like you and me regarding this stuff. Would you mind touching on how you came up with those survey questions and distributing it and all and the results even? So as I was discussing this with different people going to different classes and just teaching about post-traumatic stress and teaching about leadership, I, I was really asking them what would they like to see in a survey like this, and I got some feedback from them, and I thought through it myself, what would I like to see in a survey like this, and what would people want to know about tattoos and how that's related to dealing with some type of trauma or remembering something they've been through. 
So that's how I derived the specific questions. And then I tested them with a few individuals that I told with high respect just to see what they felt about it. And they felt that we would get some really good research. So this is something that you would basically do in a doctoral study. I didn't do it as a doctoral study. I just finished my doctoral study a few years before this. So I had a good idea of how to do this and make sure it was credible research. So what I wanted to do was I wanted people to tell me about their experiences with tattoos. I could interview them all day long and write what they say or paraphrase, but I wanted specifics, like word for word of how they were feeling about this. So when I went through these specific questions and I sent it out and they had to sign a waiver that said, I'm willing to give my opinion of tattoos and trauma and that it can be published into a book to help us learn about tattoos and trauma. And they were willing to do that. And then it was pretty neat because all of those participants are, are in this book. They helped write this book to help other people learn from it. And as I was reading through there, you know, they are describing their different types of tattoos, why they receive those tattoos, what they make them remember, how it helps them heal. Now, not everyone agreed with that. 87% of the participants agreed there was some type of help from getting a tattoo in remembrance of a traumatic event or traumatic time in their life. And that was important to me because if 87% of the participants felt that way, I knew that I was not the only one. And it was really powerful research to hear from all emergency responders. That's who the only people who were allowed to utilize this were actual emergency responders. So police, fire, military, EMS, that's the information I wanted because they have a deep understanding of, of where we're coming from with this. Nice. Now, how has personally for you, and I know you kind of answered the survey at the end yourself, but how has tattooing on yourself, you know, helped out with all of your trauma? It helps me remember. I I am big on processing my thoughts and I'm a big ponderer. I think a lot. My wife says I overthink, uh, but I do that because I'm very open to thinking about why we do what we do. And I want to have reminders of how I've overcome this traumatic experience in my life, but also to be strength for other people. And I've added a lot of tattoos since I wrote that specific book, the tattoos that I talked about in the book. I've completed many of those. But I like to, to, to look and see something that reminds me of those nine firefighters that I have on my arm. That's got the nine angels that are in the clouds. I, it reminds me of the journey that we've been on, not just me, but it reminds me of all the people that I work with. And I'm proud that, that we're still in our department trying to do good things. And you know, at the current recording of this podcast, we have 58 people that are still in our organization. And I will tell you, many of those people have come up to me and told me about their tattoos that they received and honoring the Charleston Nine. And that was just that one specific event. They'll send me pictures and, or some send me pictures of their loved ones they've honored. So it's really neat to kind of see how this has grown out and people do have that feeling and that emotion that it does help them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And, and I love how people go mm -hmm. out of their way to show you their tattoos, including me. You know, I finally get a chance to see you again live in person in January and I'm pulling up my pant legs like, check this out, check out this work. Well, you the know, cool part about that is that when you do that, that's actually a moment for you to get some therapy talking to a peer that has similar likes as you in tattooing. And that's something I found in the research. People want to tell you about their tattoo because they're proud of a tattoo. There's not many people that go get a random symbol on their arm because they're bored. Maybe they lost a bet. I could see them doing that. But people have tattoos because they mean something. Now, if you correlate that to a traumatic experience, which is deeply rooted in their emotions, they're going to have something that means a lot to them. And if you really watch people, when they describe their tattoos, their face lights up, their body, their emotions light up because they're so proud to talk about that specific piece of art. And sometimes they get emotional, but that's the point of the tattoo. It helps them talk about something they really probably don't like talking about. It's powerful. Yeah, it is. And that's right. We're powerful. I know it's funny. You talk about the random tattoos. You could either be bored or you could be way too young with too much money and, and get dumb stuff like I did when I started my career over 20 years ago. So I have a lot of things that have no meaning. And it took me about almost 20 years before I actually said, all right, I want to do something that has meaning. You know, Absolutely. and I'll, I'll throw up a picture of that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll insert that on here, but it was just basically, if, and I know you see a lot of tattoos and it's been a while, but it was, it was really just the IFF Memorial right. um, being there. I gave a flag to one of our widows and just that experience, but it was just everybody else that is also on that wall that I, I work with and care about. And it's just, 
like you said, it's, it's my tribute to them. It's, it's me just remembering them and, and, you know, doing my best to make sure nobody, nobody, I don't want anybody added to that leg. Absolutely. And that's a constant reminder of that. That's your why, why you do what you do. And some people need that reminder to be able to overcome and continue to do the job that you love. Yes, exactly. I wanted to see if you had heard of this before at all. Um, this was, this was kind of new to me. One of the guys, younger guys on my job, um, his father passed away and they ended up um, taking, he was, he was cremated and they used his ashes and put it in the tattoo ink and he's got a big kind of to sleeve with his and it is, it's actually his dad in there have you ever heard of anything like that being done i've heard some conversations on that i haven't done in-depth research on it but i'm just, i know it's possible just from some roundabout conversations i've had but it sounds pretty interesting and it sounds like something that's really really powerful for someone to utilize because i mean to have your father tattooed in the tattoo ink I mean, that, that, that says something right there. And that even goes further with what we're talking about, how it helps someone heal. Next, le next yeah. level stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. you do that in tribute, but then it's actually them, yeah. part of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, and, and that's for that person, instead of wearing a necklace or wearing a ring or something they feel would be symbolic of their loved one, they tattooed on their arm. It's the same thing. The difference is they tattooed something on their arm with their father in there. It's, the sim it's a similar basis of how you're trying to get over this grief. It's just a different way of doing it. And that's why we have to be respectful of how people deal with grief. Everybody's different. Absolutely. Um, would you mind giving our viewers some advice? If, if, if we got somebody on here and they've been dealing with some stuff and they want to pay tribute, they want to do a tattoo, they've never had one before. There's some people out there. My wife's one of them. Um, what kind of <laughs> advice would you give those first time um, tattoo seeking people that want to actually do something that's that's meaningful first they need to do their research and make sure that tattooing is something that they really want to do i want people to understand what they're getting into when they get a tattoo because for some people it's just not for them on the side of artistic values and artistic views and what you like you have to design something that you feel really passionate about it's it's probably not a good idea if you're getting something that's symbolic to you just to throw something together do your research on these different symbols or different words and make sure you find the right tattoo artist. Every tattoo I have um, on both arms, both legs, my chest and my back, one guy has done. And he's been my tattoo artist since he moved here to Charleston back in 2000. And I want to say 2005 is when tattooing was actually legalized in South Carolina. The date, the year may be off on that, but I think that's close. It's somewhere early 2000s. And so this guy actually moved here after Hurricane Katrina from Louisiana to come to Charleston. And that's the first thing I wanted to do when I started getting tattoos after the event was find someone that I felt comfortable with. So make sure you do your research. But before you go and get your tattoos, I would ask that you go try to seek some mental health help too. I would say you go and talk with a counselor and you talk about the things that are bothering you and see if there's maybe that modality may help you. You may just need some talk therapy to see why you're feeling certain ways. But mental health is very prevalent in our profession very prevalent in our society. That's why there's a lot of research out there that's talking about that we lose more firefighters to suicides than line of duty deaths. And that's research that I've read from different organizations that are starting to track this. This isn't my research. And so I say that because I don't want you jumping into getting a tattoo thinking you're gonna go get a tattoo and all of your problems are gonna magically be cured. Please don't say that. I'm not a medical doctor. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that for me, my journey, when I did my research and I started to get these different tattoos, the artistic value of what I saw, but also the value I felt when I left getting a tattoo, it was something I couldn't describe. It was almost like talking to a therapist while you're getting a tattoo. And then when you're done, you feel really cool, calm and collected. So there's a lot of different reasons why it helps me, but you have to do your research on you to see if that's something that you would like to do. Yeah, no, very nicely summed up. I know I just felt for me, I don't want to say closure, but kind of complete. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, different for different people. Sometimes it's closure and sometimes it can mean a new journey. You're starting something new to look forward to be more positive, to be more engaged, whatever it may be. But that's, the, that's that personal journey that you're on. 
and finding what you need to signify either the start of something new or the closure of something that was traumatic. Yeah. Nice. Is there, is there anything else um, that we missed? I know this is uh, I mean, it's, we talked about the book, you talked about your experiences. Is there anything else you want to talk about as far as tattoos and, and trauma, um, any experiences, anything like that? I like to talk about the people that I've talked with in the courses from around the country when I teach. And when I start to look and I see tattoos on their arms, I see little tattoos poking out maybe of their shirt, I ask them what it is. And many times they explain to me it's some type of tattoo related to remembrance of something traumatic. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to put, put this research together because what I was seeing was I, I, I am judged when people see me when I don't have long sleeves and long pants on because I do have a lot of tattoos. And I, I go into this knowing that. But I also go into this knowing that it's changed my perspective of before you're judgmental of people, understand why they do what they do. And also understand that that person that has a lot of tattoos, that they, they're good people just as well. Now, tattoos historically, they started out and they said they were for people that were not good people. That's what the research showed back in you know, the old days. And then over time, you start to see tattooing become more mainstream. Until today, one of my family members had surgery a while back and the anesthesiologist walked in and I could see his sleeve poking out from under his, his long sleeve shirt. And he's an anesthesiologist, good person, very in, intelligent, very educated person. And so my message was this is, whether you agree or you disagree with tattoos and trauma, what I was trying to do with this book had nothing to do with tattoos, really. It had a lot to do with trauma and respecting how people deal with trauma. Everyone takes it differently. Some people can talk about it. Some people can't talk about it. Some people want to get a tattoo. Some people want to read a lot about the specific feelings that they're having. Some people want to talk to counselors. The main thing I want you to get from this podcast is please find something that helps you. That's what matters at the end of the day. We all have our struggles. We are human beings with feelings and emotions. We are firefighters. We deal with a lot of traumatic events that we respond to, but that does not mean that you don't feel the mental anguish from these 20 and 30 years of service that you give. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to try different modalities to get the help that you need, because at the end of the day, you signed up to help other people, but if you can't help yourself stay physically and mentally fit, it's hard to really have that long and joyous career that we all want to have in our profession and really do good things. So I hope that you take that message from this and you do good things with it. That's beautiful. Way to sum this up. That was tremendous. Um, if you don't mind, before we wrap it up here, would you mind telling everybody where they can find your books, where they, where they can find you? Not literally, sure. not the stalking part. <laughs> yes, sir. I, you know, here, I'm just really talking about um, the important parts of this profession. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not here for you to look up my information. You see my name on the screen. If you want to do additional research, feel free to do that. But I don't want you to think I'm here selling anything. I want to make sure you get a good message from this. And if you do your research on your own, then God bless you. And I'll do anything I can for you. I'm pretty easy to find. All you have to do is do some research, and I'll do anything I can to help you. I just appreciate you listening to that. Perfect. Thank you again so much. Any, any time I get to spend with you is definitely quality time. You know, he's Dr. David Griffin, assistant chief, Charleston fire department. And I'm Jim Bernica and we're out of time. Talk to you next month. Thanks Jim.